counterfeit medicine is a tragedy, not for Western countries, because we have excellent uh, pharmacies and uh, laws, and so uh, we are protected. But in other countries, other continents, Africa, Southeast Asia, it's a real tragedy. According to WHO, 700,000 people die each year because of fake substandard medicines. In Africa, in some countries, 70% of the medicines sold are fake medicines. So a mother who has a child with fever buy on a street market the medicine she thinks will save the life of her child and she kills her child. That is the tragedy. And it's the same in Southeast Asia, the Mekong River uh, countries. So we have to do something. We started by working with the uh, organization in charge of uh, World Customs uh, Organization and they uh, organized with us uh, big offensive actions in harbors, in 15 African harbors for two weeks over four years. And we took in the container ships coming from big countries 850 million fake medicines, huge quantities. What happened? Nothing. Because the governments were not equipped, prepared to take action in Africa. So we decided that the best way to proceed was to first mobilize the head of states of these African countries and Southeast Asian countries and I, I got the support of President Hollande and then President Macron. And uh, then we prepared a model law to criminalize what is uh, a crime. It is not counterfeit. This is an armistice. It can be counterfeited uh, or a Vuitton bag. But a counterfeit drug is not the same. It is a crime because it kills. It may kill. It often kills innocent people. And so the law criminalizes the production and the sale and traffic of fake substandard medicines. So eight countries in Africa have already adopted this model law as their national law. And slowly, the number of countries adopting this model law is expanding from West Africa to Central Africa and hopefully to the whole continent. Our second task is then to educate the judges, the prosecutors, the custom officers and the police to implement the law. And that's what we are doing in the countries which have already adopted these, uh, this model law. And we start the same process uh, in Southeast Asia. Last year in November, we have organized a big conference with ministers, health and security ministers coming from Cambodia, Thailand, Laos, uh, Myanmar uh, and Vietnam. In Phnom Penh, we had the ministers in charge of health and security of these five countries working together with the pharmaceutical industry, with NGOs, launching big campaigns and it was a big success story. Now we have to launch phase two, which is now the adoption of the model law by uh, these uh, countries of the Mekong River uh, Basin and uh, next month uh, we'll have a big seminar in Hanoi with a specialist in international law and health of these five countries 
hopefully they will consider the adoption of uh, this model law and put it in the national law of these five countries. If that is so, then we'll train the uh, prosecutors and judges and uh, police officers and custom officers of these five countries. So that's what we try to do. You may ask, why don't we speak about that yeah. in Europe or in the US? Well, simply because we are protected. When you go to a pharmacy and you buy medicine, you can be sure it's safe. So we are not mobilized because we are protected. But our job in this uh, small institute is precisely to take care of the hundreds of millions of those who are under the threat of dying because criminal networks are providing massively these fake medicines to innocent people.